Okay, so what is the inverse square law? Just what it says. The inverse square law shows that for every doubling of distance from a sound source in a free field, and I'm emphasizing free field because that's outdoors, the sound intensity will drop by six decibels. Remember that's six decibels for each doubling of the, of the uh, distance. The intensity of the sound is inversely proportional to the square of the distance of the wave front from the signal source. So it sounds like it's something a lot more, but actually it's not. Uh, it's actually rather simple. You've probably experienced it, but you never really maybe thought about it. So let's take a look at this. So here's a speaker. So basically, what we do on the inverse square law is we can take measurements uh, for every doubling of distance away from a speaker and we get a reading and that reading is going to be around 6 dB less. So basically they're further away from the speaker the less the acoustical energy. That's all the inverse square law is telling us. And this involves point source speakers so these would be like your 15s or your 18s in a horn this is not related to uh, line arrays. Uh, line arrays have a, a 3 dB drop for every doubling of distance uh, up to a point. So let's take a look at this. So for every doubling of distance, the SPL sound pressure level drops by 6 dB. So if we have a speaker sitting out here, and let's say that we double the distance from the speaker on out. Let's say we're doing an outdoor show. And we can look at we can look at taking readings every so many feet. So for every doubling of the feet, we can take a reading. So if we take a reading here, then every doubling of the distance is going to be negative 6 dB from the point where the reading was taken. So if we do one at 6 feet, we'll do one at 12, 24, you get the idea, up to 96 feet. So if we start out with 100 dB, every doubling of distance, the dB is going to drop uh, by 6 dB. That's all the inverse square law is. That's all it's telling us. Now, as I said in some of the other videos, it, it's important to know the math. You don't have to memorize it. Obviously, there's no test. But it is good to know the math behind this. So let's take a look here. Here's an example, outdoor show, front of the house is 50 feet away. And the uh, park boundary is an additional 60 feet back behind where this picture was taken. So we can use the inverse square law to estimate what our SPLs are going to be back behind us. So here's another, here's another uh, event. Uh, front of house was about 90 feet out. The photo was taken at 130 feet. And I do recall that the SPLs in this event were rather low uh, back where we were, which is fine. Uh, as I've said in other videos, the volume level really need, needs to match the environment and the event. So why does knowing the inverse square law help us? Here's why. It helps with estimating if your sound system can produce SPL uh, for a particular event. Example, like if you have a customer and organizer and they tell you that they're looking for a sound system that can do 90 dB, uh, it can do 100 dB out in front of house, this is how you can tell if your system can do that. Now you're going to notice something here called A and C weighted. Uh, I'll mention that here a little bit later. And secondly, it helps with estimating what an SPO will be at a certain distance from the stage and speakers. And this is where it really comes important. Uh, when you're doing outdoor shows, uh, especially within the city, uh, there may be sound level requirements. In other words, uh, with particular boundaries due to, let's say, neighborhoods, uh, some cities say that you cannot be at a particular decibel level past the, a, let's just say, past a park boundary. And understanding how the inverse square law is and just doing the basic math, you can figure this out without having to, without having to go back and check. All right, so for, for example here, we're back on this one again. We know that the stage is here and here's front of house. Now, for this particular event, the city said it needed to be less than 83 dB, a weighted. 
at the park boundary. So that was that was simple to know. So I do know that the front of house from the stage was right about 50 feet. And I do know that from front of house back to the property line was an additional 60 feet. Now, I took some readings during this event and this event wasn't too bad. Uh, it wasn't heavy rock by any means. Uh, there was a lot of vocal, uh, but there was uh, the band played occasionally. And when I metered it at front of house, I had 85 dBA. Now, I do know that from the stage back, I was measuring, let's say, 100 feet. So I knew just beyond the 100 feet mark was the uh, property boundary of the park. So I knew that with 85 dB at front of house, I knew that doubling the distance, so now 100 feet from the stage was, was going to give me 79 dB. So I didn't need to go back and meter it to check it because I already knew if I'm at front of house at 50 feet, all I had to do was double the distance, subtract six from my reading, and I knew that I was a 79 dB, which is well below the 83 dB the city um, had required. So, the SPL weightings that I mentioned um, in one of the previous slides, there's two that are very prominent. There's A weighting and C weighting. And the A weighting is less sensitive to base frequencies. The C weighting is very sensitive to base frequencies. So if you look at the chart, you'll see that bottom curved line, letter A. Okay, that's an A weighting. Now if you look at the frequency range, let's say between 50 and 200 hertz, notice how quiet it is if you look at the scale on the left-hand side, the database level scale. It's very quiet. In the top left of that graph, you'll see the letter C. That small little line, that shows how much louder the SPL ratings are for a C weighting. So if a city or, or somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you cannot exceed a particular decibel rating, uh, pardon me, a decibel level um, at this boundary, they need to tell you either it's A-weighted or C-weighted. Uh, if they just tell you it's a decibel, uh, it's probably safe to assume I would just start with an A. So this is how we can use inverse square law uh, to help us do our jobs uh, better. So as always, thanks for watching.